Good morning, brother. Today I want to talk to you about a subject, a word I hear a lot in my work with men. Um, I tend to work with people that are fairly intelligent, fairly successful. Um, oftentimes extremely intelligent about things in business and a good, good bit of things in life. And many of them would describe themselves as being hyper vigilant. And in fact, they would credit a lot of their success to this attribute of being hyper vigilant. What do I mean by that? I mean that they see themselves as maintaining a high degree of situational awareness, uh, the ability to read the tea leaves about the future, to mitigate risk, to have um, really pretty firm, what they would say is ar maybe arguments or beliefs to guide their future. They're great forecasters, or they see themselves this way. And so they tend to bring this into relationships and what therapists will oftentimes call this way of being is hypervigilance. It's really just, in my opinion, a euphemism for anxiety and I've been thinking about this a lot because I think the way it's described hypervigilance kind of highlights that it's an extra something that's what hyper means right it means kind of uh, too much too much vigilance and I think that's kind of a misleading way to look at hypervigilance to look at this kind of way of being in a man because it makes him seem like he has too much of something and I don't think that's true at all in my work with men I've really come to see hypervigilance as better described as hypo resilience meaning the man has really lost either resiliency in and himself or at least the confidence in himself that he can be resilient in whatever comes his way. And so when a man loses his ability to be resilient, even if it's not a true loss in his resiliency, but the belief in his resiliency, what he does is he goes into overdrive and he goes into the mode of trying to control risk, trying to control the potential of loss trying to manipulate outcomes, right? And this is something the attorneys I talk to struggle with a lot, uh, same with engineers, because their kind of way of being, especially in the workplace and career, rewards this activity. Because when you control an outcome in the courtroom, maybe you're, you're earning safety and reliability of some kind for a, a client, right? But when you're hypo resilient or hyper uh, vigilant in the bedroom, it's disastrous. When you're like this in relationship, disastrous. Because what this guy will do is he'll do all that projecting and forecasting about risk, risk versus reward, return on investment, and he'll generally get completely stalled because he'll be so scared or so averse to what the future could be that he plays it safe. And this shows up a lot for my clients and the guys that call me with this behavior of basically being reserved, right? And so it's interesting that they're hyper something, but hyper vigilance makes you actually completely dumb down and play it safe when it comes to the amount of energy you put into your relationship. And here's what happens. Like anything, if you stop putting anything into it, you stop getting anything out of it, right? And so this man inevitably runs into a circumstance where he starts to reap the rewards for his lack of of investment of himself and his energy. 
Well, listen, bro, relationships require that you be all in, 100%, right? We're not, we're not just putting the tip in. We're all the way in, 100%. Deep, driving, right? This is the way we have to engage women, relationships, etc. We cannot be tepid and get anything good. As my great and wise friend, Charlie McKeever says, the camp, you can't say to a campfire, I'll give you wood when you give me more heat. And yet this is what the hypervigilant man tends to do in all of his relationships, especially with his romantic partner. He's afraid that if he puts himself in, he's seeing some great risk in the future. So he holds back and boom, he kills his relationship. There's no path forward in a romantic relationship for the hypervigilant until he learns to be or learns that he is resilient. So that's my message this morning. If you're hypervigilant, I want you to start calling yourself hypo-resilient. I want you to see yourself as having a deficit of resiliency or at least a belief in your resiliency because that's usually what it is. That's the real nipple twister about all this is the man actually doesn't lack anything. He's just risk averse because he's lacking confidence that he has what it takes. He's lacking confidence that if something goes sideways, he'll be able to adapt and improvise and overcome. But you know what? Every man I have met who finds himself off the rails in his romantic relationship, even if he wasn't resilient going into it, he discovers something about himself that he's okay, that he's actually not dead, that life hasn't fallen apart quite as badly as he thought it would. In fact, a lot of men in my practice or in the environment I, I work in, a lot of men, once they get separated and they get past that horrible day when they have to wave goodbye to the kids and they're you know one or two weeks into their own place and getting a little bit comfortable they say to us you know i kind of like this i'm actually really enjoying myself um, not because they're going out and hitting the bars and you know having all kinds of illicit relationships but because they're enjoying seeing themselves for themselves, maybe for the first time in a long time. They're enjoying that when they connect with their children, the quality is immensely better, right? These men ultimately discover that what they feared was bullshit. And when they're in that situation, that they're actually quite capable of handling themselves. And so this is why a man must see himself as resilient. The man who sees himself as resilient knows that he can be all in, that he can fully penetrate his relationship, his woman, her heart, and he doesn't need to worry if it goes sideways because he know he'll overcome. Are you having a problem with this? Are you feeling hypo-resilient? If you are, I want you to leave a comment and then I want you to go to my website, spendmasterson.com. You'll see all kinds of buttons everywhere about setting up a free call with me. And I'd love to talk to you about this. I'm not going to talk to you about anything salesy. I'm not going to talk to you about trying to get you to buy any book or bullshit like that. We're going to jump right in to what's going on in your heart. Why you're feeling uh, this sense of fear and anxiety. And uh, we're going to start doing something about that. I'm not going to bug and pester you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to love you. And I promise I'll do that like no one ever has for you before. I hope you'll get in touch. Look forward to talking to you. And stay strong, brother. Take care.